Corey and I are taking a break out on the porch swing this morning. We've got a busy day. She's going to help me all day. Lots of things on our list, but we're going to start it, start our day by having a little chat with you and kind of updating you on a few things. Mostly, the I had some news about the cookbook that I wanted to share, but we'll talk about a few other things too. Right now, the garden is the main concern of ours. We've got great green beans waiting on us inside the can. We've got cucumbers going crazy. I still don't have any squash or zucchini. Corey's got enough though to share with me. And we've got grapes waiting on us. This morning we heard about some peaches that we can have from our family. So lots of things going on in the garden. And I've really not put up very much stuff this year so far. We've done tomatoes and we've done pickles. Justin Metcalf's wonderful pickles. And that's all. I've not made any jelly. We will have to, of course, we'll be canning green beans. I've got to do something with the potatoes, which we've been eating, so there may not be any of those left to, to actually can, and uh, my cabbage. So one of my videos I did last year, I kind of talked about how some years, if you think about preserving and, and how you do your pantry of all your uh, preserved food, now, there's so many opinions out there. You have to, you know, research everything and then go by your personal experience But about how long things last on the shelves. Like, I wouldn't be afraid to eat a jar of green beans that had been there five years, six years, seven or eight years, as long as the seal wasn't um, compromised. Now, they might not be as good as they were that first year, but they'd still be edible, I think. But anyway, when you if you're somebody that puts up food, and you put up a lot of food like we do, sometimes there happens a year like this. It might be a, a year where there's just not as much bounty to, to put up, or it might be a year like this where we've just been with, you know, taking care of Miss Cindy and losing Miss Cindy, and and then all the things when someone dies and you're the person that has to take care of all their, their affairs. There's just so many extra things to do. So that's took a lot of our time. And then unfortunately, Granny's not been well, so that's took a lot of our time. So so we've just, you know, it's just like that's not our concern this year. It's, our concern is our family. But the great thing is we still have some things on our shelf from last year and they'll be just fine to go through the winter with. I, I did a lot of jelly last year. I even did so much that I thought, why am I doing, well, I need to kind of quit with the jelly, but maybe somehow I, you know, that was God blessing me knowing that, well, you're not going to do no jelly next year, Dipper, probably. So we'll still have a, at least a few jars of jelly. And the great thing I did last year, too, was the first time in ages that I had canned blackberries and I canned grape juice. So I could still go back and even make jelly from those if I wanted to. But what about your garden, Corey? While we're talking about gardens, how's it going? It's going pretty good, but I think we have more shade than I thought we did because I've noticed, especially in the late afternoon, some of the cucumbers and the peppers are not getting sun at all. There's a tree, I want to say maybe it's a dogwood tree, I'm not sure. And then there's a really big, there's two really big holly trees. And I think we've got more shade than I realized. Things really seem to be growing, so I don't know that it's that big of a problem at this point. Uh, the squash grows really fast and it gets too big <laughs> for me to eat really day. fast, yeah. but I froze a lot of that to make soup with later. Uh, cucumbers, and of course we were just gone uh, on vacation for a week, and so I told my neighbors, just come pick stuff, mm -hmm. please, it will help me, you can enjoy it. So it's going pretty good. There's definitely things I would do different next year that I can see already. The tomatoes are definitely producing, but there are so many tomatoes in a small space that I wonder maybe if they're not getting enough sun because like these here at y'all's house seem to be uh, ripening way faster uh, than ours so I don't mm -hmm. know if it's a sun issue or I just crowded them together too much. It's not always sure. the life of a gardener every year you learn especially when you're first starting out like Corey and you think well I won't do that again or if I'd only done this or I want to try this all those things. I don't think I told you me and Granny went over to your garden one day. No, I didn't, I didn't know even that. tell you till you're saying that. So Corey, I knew Corey had told her um, neighbors to help herself to their food to her garden, yeah, and, and y'all could have too. Yeah, but, it's oh, just... but we've got plenty. Yeah, <laughs> y'all got, we've got plenty, plenty. So, but while we were there that day, I, Granny didn't get out of the car. I had to get something for Corey, or I had to, it was about your mail. Yeah, that, checking that, my yeah, mail. The mail. Anyway, I said, well, let me just run through because I thought I don't know for sure if the neighbors are, and right. I hate for anything to go to waste. So I was I got Granny a few cucumbers good, and good. I think I got two good. squash. 
for Granny. Good. And then I was down there looking at the tomatoes, and you did have a few ripe ones because I ate two or three mm -hmm. of the little Tommy toes. And then I got back in the car and showed Granny what I'd got for and because we knew Corey wouldn't care. And then she said, well, what was you eating down there? <laughs> She'd seen me. I said, I was eating a tomato, uh, and it was good. Yeah. I was eating some little Tommy toes. So I was happy, though, that your neighbors could help you out. Yeah. And then they get to enjoy some of it, too, because they don't have a have a big garden mm -hmm. as big as Corey's is not real big but no. even that so they got to enjoy some fresh yeah. fresh stuff and even though they're right next to us they have so much shade that it's just not really possible yeah. for them so you and Austin may have to think about topping some of those trees or something yeah when I was walking out of the house this morning I thought yeah that one that one this one yeah. maybe next year could just go I mean yeah. I hate to cut trees down but if it's shade in the garden yeah well you have a lot of trees though so yeah. taking select few out wouldn't right. be wouldn't and some that. of those that are getting big, not the dogwood, it's small, but those two holly trees are like this big around up next to the house. Really, it's probably mm -hmm. not a good thing. And they get in the power line. Well, they may power people. Right, that would EMC be up to them, may but. trim them, yeah. So along with one reason our gardens are, this is the time of the year, of course, when they would be booming if they're going to. And But we've been getting a lot of rain, a lot of rain. I, I looked this morning at the weather. It looks like to this week will be not any rain. But all that rain just means it, immense growth. So you can really, really see that after it rains. It'll be amazing how much growth will happen in the next few days. Um, along with those rains, we've been having a few storms. Nothing really, really bad. But one of the days, let's see, was that before you was gone? When we was, the lightning struck our, yeah, that was our... I think I... I wasn't here when it happened. I, yeah, I, but I, I mean, was you still, was that when you was yeah, on vacation? Was at, I've lost was, track of my time. It yeah. was before I went. Okay, I the week house. before, yeah. So there was a storm one evening. It was pretty, some, oh, I know what it, yeah, because it was, it was closer to 4th of July now, I'm remembering. Yeah, that's right. Because um, there was some fireworks down below us. And so we were, I was getting ready, taking a bath, and Matt and Katie was in the living room, and I was hearing the fireworks, and then all of a sudden I heard this huge, what I thought at first was fireworks, clap of thunder, and I thought, oh my goodness, uh, if that was fireworks, wonder what kind that was, but then I realized, no, that was thunder, it shook the whole house, and then I went ahead and showered and went back in there, and we were all talking about the big thing of thunder. Well, we didn't realize till the next morning when I got up, I went to the bathroom, no water would come on, and I was like, what's going on? Well, Matt was already up, and he'd already figured it out. So he said that big clap of thunder, that lightning pop before that got must have got our well. How did you finish taking a shower though? It, he's that's what I was going to say. He there was enough in the pressure tank is probably why we didn't notice it before we went to bed, because I took the shower and then we just then there was nobody washing dishes or anything like that, and I my showers are usually not very long. I was going to say you yeah, can take a I, fast I can take a shower. fast shower. So anyway, there was enough water to get us through that and then just brushing your teeth or whatever, you know, you don't use much. So nobody noticed it till the next morning. And and then there was water too in the uh, pressure tank, but also in the hot water heater probably helped with my shower. Anyway, Matt had already noticed it when he got up, but of course he didn't want to wake me up to tell me that. He was just waiting until I got up and he said it's either the hit the pump or maybe if we're lucky it's hit the control box just in the basement and I was like well how will you know and so he went down there and took it off and he could see where it had whatever had caused it the little top of the I don't know if it's called a capacitor or what was like raised up bent up so he's like that's what it is so he thank goodness he didn't have to pull the pump but he went straight to Lowe's and got one and come back and by the time he got home it only took like five minutes to fix it so that was that's we were good. lucky and I think it was like a hundred and I don't remember forty dollars or something, but much easier and and cheaper in the long run than pulling the pump out. And if it had been the pump and the well, so we were we were yeah. grateful for that. Definitely. Yeah. So we've been having, but thunderstorms are just part and parcel for summer in the southern mountains of Appalachia. Even in thunderstorms, even in rain. It's pretty pretty usual for us. I wish I could, I said in my, one of my last videos, I wish I could share that with all of you who need rain. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could yeah. share it. And then on those days, like last week, when we had so much rain, you could share some of your sunshine with me. Yeah. But that's not how it works. So in our, one of our recent videos we did was the Christmas in July. It turned out to be a nice video, I think. I hope you enjoyed it. 
but I, in it I talked about the Christmas CDs and that we just had a few left. Well, they sold out really quickly, and then I've had several people contact me and say, I, I really want one. Are you going to get more? And I will. I'll get more. I, that's on my list of things to do is to order more of them, and then I'll be sure to let you know once they're restocked in the Etsy shop. It's a, a really nice Christmas CD, even though I'm prejudiced, but it's like my favorite Christmas music to listen to. Pap mm -hmm. and Paul do such a good job, and Paul, uh, what do you call it, mixed the mm -hmm. CD and done all the different instruments, a lot of them, and it just turned out so nice. It's several years old now, though, of course, because Pap's been gone since 2016, but it's still just my favorite. I don't, it'd be hard to say what my favorite song on it is. I think in the other video I said, and it is true, A Little Town of Bethlehem is one of my favorite Christmas songs, mm -hmm. and The Friendly Beast, but then mm -hmm. there's Jingle Bells on there that's really peppy and fun and nice. So I'll let you know as soon as I get those back in stock. I, a lot of people have been asking us about Granny, too, as we've shared that she's not not feeling well and not doing well and I give more updates about her on the Blind Pig and the Acorn blog so if you're someone that reads on there you already know that we're kind of in a often the way it is when someone is sick in a waiting game of, of waiting on more tests to finally kind of find out exactly what it is it looks like it, it may be cancer though we don't know that for sure and we'll just have to pray and trust God in whatever comes our way. Miss Cindy was fond of saying we'll have to wait, we just have to wait across whatever comes, so it's the same thing. We're just going to have to wait across whatever comes with Granny. But uh, later today I take her back for another appointment. She takes blood thinners because she has a mechanical heart valve. I doubt we've, doubt we've ever shared that. She's had it since 2003, I think. And she had to have it because she had rheumatic fever as a child. She was in high school, actually, when she had rheumatic fever. Very, very serious, and it damaged her heart valve. And she knew that. Uh, I mean, when you have that, you know that. Even back then, they knew. She told me that when she finally got to go back to school, and she loved school, that the only way they'd let her go back is every day she had to go take a nap in the teacher's lounge. She had to go to the teacher's lounge and they'd let her lay on the couch and she'd take mm -hmm. like a 30 minute to an hour nap yeah. and then she could go back to class. It was when she was in high school. But anyway, so eventually she always knew that and always had to be careful if, you know, you have dental work, you have to take antibiotics and those kind of things and keep a check on it. She'd go for checkups. But about that time when she had the finally had to have it, it started where it wasn't working, so her heart wasn't pumping well, and no matter what she did, she just immediately get exhausted. And in those days, Granny was still growing beans and canning beans, doing everything by herself, didn't need no help, you know, just whatever she needed to do. She could get out and work and do a day's work, but it got to where she couldn't, not because she wasn't physically like she is now, kind of not able. She has uh, ruptured or crushed vertebrae in her back now. But uh, she just couldn't, the stamina, she just couldn't, couldn't make it. Even the least task would just put her on the couch in exhaustion. But it was because that valve wasn't working right. Anyway, she got the mechanical heart valve. It cured her. She got right back to her normal stuff once she recovered from the surgery. But because of that, she has to be on blood thinners the rest of her life. And we have to, we have to keep a check on that. Of course, we go every so often to check, their, check her blood, usually once a month if everything's good. But any kind of test you have that's kind of invasive, then they've got to worry about do you need to go off that because if they hurt you in some way, then you might bleed. You know, if you're on blood thinners, you bleed real easy. So that's kind of what we're trying to figure out right now before the next test. But we're so thankful for all your prayers and all your well wishes to Granny. She's in good spirits and um, got green beans to can, so she's happy about that. And it always makes her happy, and she's still working on her Christmas things, too. But thank you for all the prayers, and we'll appreciate your continued prayers for Granny and for the doctors just to know what they should do, what, what's best to do, since it's kind of a precarious situation. Now, the last thing I want to talk about was mine and Jim's cookbook. Still doing really good. We're so excited and so pleased and humbled and honored that it's continuing to sell well and do good. And we've got a few events coming up that I want to talk about. So I've got my phone out here so I can make sure I got get them right. So this Saturday will be July 29th. We're actually going to be right here in our hometown of Murphy. 
Um, that's where we go to town. We get groceries and things like that. Brass Towns are just a very small community, so there's no, no stores really other than Clay's Corner. And so we're going to be at the museum in Murphy, downtown Murphy, the Cherokee County Museum. And we're going to be there from 11 until 2 p.m. We'll be signing cookbooks. The museum will have them there for sale if you've not bought your cookbook yet or if you want to bring yours with you, that would be fine. The museum is a really neat place. It'd be worth coming not just to see us, but to see the museum. They've got a lot of great artifacts there. Many uh, artifacts from the Cherokee Indians. It's really a fascinating place. And then they've got other things too. A uh, really neat doll collection. Um, I guess it's still in there. I've not been there in a while, but they used to have it. I guess it's still in there. You think so? I hope so. Yeah. Anyway, it's it was creepy it, though. It, Corey <laughs> thinks it's creepy, but it was actually Miss Kilgore's owned all those dolls, and Pap used to work for her and her husband when he drove an oil truck. So I always think of those dolls and think about her collecting them. Um, but we'd love to see you, and I hope that Matt and Corey and Katie are all going to be with me there. And you can meet Teresa. She's the director of the museum, dear family friend. We've known her forever. Her kids, her and her husband's kids, grew up with Corey and Katie, and um, she's really nice. You get to meet her. The other event is going to be on Tuesday, August 22nd. Jim and I both will be at this one, and it's going to be at the Mariana Black Library in Bryson City, North Carolina, from 4 until 7 p.m. And that's just going to be, we're not going to do a presentation or anything, kind of a drop-in event. People can come, and uh, you can bring your cookbook with you, and we'll sign it. If you want to come and chat with us or answer any kind of question, ask us any kind of questions, we'll be glad to or answer, answer them. Questions yeah, we or you have can, we, you. we might ask you some questions, and you can answer, answer our questions. No, you can ask us and just chat with us and talk with us. So those are the only two that we have coming up now, and if there's more added, we'll be sure to remind you about them or to let you know about them and then remind you. I like to remind you because time goes by so fast, it's hard to keep track of what's going on. The other thing about the book was I discovered that there is now a spiral edition of the book cookbook. I don't have one, but you can find them on Amazon. And also, several people had asked me, when I said I don't have one, well, I technically don't have one, but I mean I don't have them to sell. You can't buy one from me, but they are on um, Amazon. And then someone, several people, had asked me about the Kindle version. Well, I asked the publisher, and they said, well, they told me a long time ago there would be one, and then they said they would check into it. So they did. This was probably a week and a half ago. And the per then they forwarded me the email where basically the person said, oops, I'm sorry, I was supposed to already have that out. Um, but I've looked on Amazon, and it's still not there. So I'm going to have to talk to the publisher again and see what happened with the, oops, I'm sorry, I don't have that. And I'll get it right out because it's not there, and it's that's probably been a week and a half ago. But as soon as I have information about that, I will share that with you too. So I think that was all we had to talk about, I think. Let me, I better check my list, though. Oh, there was one more thing. Matt found out recently, and it was really uh, exciting to him, and I just thought I would share it with you. You know, you can buy a lifetime hunting license when, a, when someone's real small, real little. And, of course, he just didn't know about that, and his daddy didn't do it for him, and he didn't know about it, and he just never did it. So he buys his hunting license every year. But recently someone told him in the state of North Carolina, if you're over the age of 50, you can buy your lifetime hunting license. And I think they're about 260 with tax and everything. So he went ahead and did that, knowing that he's going to hunt the rest of his life. You know, as long as he's able, God blesses him with good health. And it'll be much cheaper in the long run. So I just wanted to pass that along because Matt just randomly found that out all these years. We didn't know. Um, he's been 50 for a few years, so he could have took advantage of it already, but, but he definitely has now. So that might be something you want to check into if you live in North Carolina and you're a hunter or someone in your family is. Or if you, in your state, they might have something similar. You might want to check into that. So that's it. Well, just Katie says, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. We're always grateful when you stop by to visit with us, and we sure hope that you have a, a great day and that you continue to help us celebrate Appalachia.